Hello. Hello. Hello, Robert Hi, here. You? How are you? Hello. Yeah, is that, is that Robert? Yep, speaking. Yep. Hello. Hi, Robert. Yeah, yeah, good. Thank you very much. Yeah, how are you this morning? Yeah, uh, well, it doesn't look like such a nice day, but I um, hope we haven't had the summer. I hope we still have some nice beach weather ahead of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's, uh, it's, a, it's been a little bit changeable, I have to say, but uh, yeah, it's, it's sort of sort of sunny today, but um, yeah. We'll, we'll have to see how the day pans out. Yeah. Are you in, in this? Are you in this area? Or are you no. The no, I'm I'm some way to the west of you, but I've been unable to contact um, halls in my area. They just one of them just doesn't reply at all. The other has an uh, answering machine, and they haven't got back to me. Ah, uh, right. Okay. Um, well, we could certainly help you with that. Do you, is, it, is there a specific um, congregation or, or hall that you're trying to get through to there? Um, well, uh, Tavistock, if you want to try, but um, I haven't been able to get to get through to them. But I've got a I've got a question. It's something I don't understand in your book because I I've been I've tried to be a Berean. You know, the yeah. Bible talks about the Berean. So I've been I've yeah. been reading your book, uh, yeah. studying it quite intently, and going to JW.org and doing some extra research. I'm puzzled about chapter chapter thirteen, lesson thirteen of enjoy life forever on page 55 how false religion misrepresents god right okay yes yeah let me just quickly uh, get to that for you so yes yeah, sure that's under section two isn't it yeah the okay. start of section two yes, yes. Yeah. um it's um paragraph two that puzzles me i don't know if you'd like to read it <clears throat> okay, so the false religion does not treat people as Jehovah does. Mm -hmm. The Bible says the false religion's sins have massed together clear up to heaven, quote in the Revelation 18.5. The centuries' religions have meddled in politics, supported wars, and caused or approved the death of countless numbers of people. Some religious holiday, or sorry, religious leaders enjoy a lavish lifestyle and demand money from their followers to pay for it. These actions prove that they do not. Um, even no God, let alone have the right to represent it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It it does seem to be rather harsh in saying that any religion that's involved in politics or warfare cannot represent Jehovah God. I mean, have I have I got that right? Well, <clears throat> the, there's a reason it says that, um, yeah. and the reason for that is what Jesus said. When do you remember? If you've ever read the Gospel accounts, where they tried to um, make Jesus um, a leader, they wanted to make him king. Yeah. In fact, the Romans even pinned to uh, his execution stake, King of the Jews, um, yes. which uh, we can go down too well with the Jews. Um, and he basically, his answer to, to Pilate was um, that my kingdom is no part of this world. Uh, and he even said, look, if, if it were, my followers would have fought for me to defend me when they were basically bringing him to execution. So the, the guidance we have from the Bible to, to Christians is to remain neutral and not to be involved in any form of politics. Because if we are, what we're effectively doing is we're backing a human organisation rather than God's kingdom. Do, do you see what I mean? Does that make sense? So is your book saying that true religion will have nothing to do with politics or, or warfare? That's correct. Not with humans. No, that's right. right. You see, the thing is, we were, do you remember Jesus encouraged us to pray for God's kingdom? Like he kept talking about his whole ministry. He was constantly talking about God's kingdom. And the reason he kept talking about that was because human government, as well-meaning as it is, and let's face it, they do do some amazing stuff. I mean, I do not envy politicians these days and the, the challenges they face. Um, they're trying to they're trying to maintain stability, order, etc. Yes. But the bottom line is because because they're imperfect humans, they'll never make sound decisions. We we see that constantly with politicians in the press making mistakes and to apologise. So, and the reason for that is because when Jehovah God created humans, He never created us to rule ourselves. He was always meant to be the sovereign uh, and the one that we look to as our ruler. Um, and so by, by supporting, by, by, by kind of getting involved in politics and supporting human politics, what we're effectively saying is 
Well, man knows better than God, if you like. Um, excuse me, I thought I heard you say God never made mm. man to rule himself. No, that's correct. In Romans 13, 1, we read that human government is instituted by God. Uh, Romans chapter 13, verse 1, let every soul be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. So after the fall, it was God's will that human government be instituted. Yes, that is correct. That is correct for a time being. So he says what he's basically saying is, look, if you don't have human rulership in place right now, there would be anarchy. So he said, you know, you've got to be respectful to authority. Um, and you've got to abide by the laws of governments around the world. So we try to be law-abiding. But that doesn't mean to say that we get involved in politics. That's another step up, if you see what I mean. And, and if, you, if, you sort of, if you then cross-reference that with Jeremiah 10... Could, 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 could we just, please, we're going... It's getting so, so complicated and so convoluted. Have I got this right? Is your book saying... For centuries, religions have meddled in politics, supported wars, and caused or approved the deaths of countless numbers of people. Is your book saying that any religion that's involved in politics and warfare cannot represent Jehovah God? It's a false religion. It, 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 is, it is saying that, and it's not just the book that's saying that. That's, that's based on the Bible. That's based on Scripture. Yes, that I, is correct. I, I, mean, found I, know it, it sounds, I know it sounds hard, but the bottom line is that what, what future does human government have you see because the scriptures clearly say in Daniel 2 44 it says that in the future God will remove all human government and only but, but this is totally irrelevant to my questions you, you need to perhaps dialogue more rather than preach at me um, all that you've raised I would have a different opinion on the scriptures that you've raised, but you've jumped from one scripture to another scripture to another scripture. I haven't had the chance to reply. At the moment, I'm trying to understand, you are saying that any religion that's involved in politics, human politics, or human wars, are false religions that cannot represent Jehovah God. That is correct, yes. Um, I found an awake which seemed to back that up. It did shock me when I found it. It's the 22nd of April, 1993, page 6. And it calls these churches that are involved in warfare pawns of Satan the devil. It says, rather than encourage love for one's brother, the churches have supported and even promoted the killing of one's brother in war. Thus they have become pawns of Satan the devil, just assuredly as were the religions of the ancient Egyptians, Assyrians, Babylonians and Romans. Um, it is rather harsh what your book is saying, any religion involved in warfare is a pawn of Satan. I mean, there's no other way to really understand it, is there? I think I'm, uh, I think I'm understanding this in context. Yes, yeah, absolutely. That's absolutely correct. Um, but the war, but the Watchtower has a long history of constant involvement at the level of the shareholders and the governing body and the presidents, before you had a governing body in 1971, the, the presidents of the Watchtower Society, they, they've been involved in politics and warfare for a long time. Yeah, no, they haven't. Um, can I, Robert, can I just ask you, um, I need to ask you this question very um, straight. Yes. What is, your, um, what is your intention for having this discussion right now? Where are you, what is your objective here? Well, I want to obey Jehovah God. And I noticed in the book of Acts, it talks about the Bereans who were diligent and were praised by Jehovah because they studied the Bible to see, studied daily to see if those things were so. And I tried to do this. I, I've got as far as chapter 13 with your book. Um, what I don't understand is that as I have looked at this, I found out that the Watchtower promoted the Liberty Bond, the purchase of the Liberty Bond or the Liberty Loan in the First World War, to support the American military in the First World War. That's the Watchtower for the 15th of May, 1918, page 6,257. There were other Zion's Watchtower articles at the time which promoted the Liberty Bond. This was basically money you loaned the American government interest-free to support the American war effort. And Rutherford wrote those articles because he knew he was about to be arrested for sedition 
And so he, he promoted the purchase of the Liberty Bond in the Watchtower magazine, or Zion's Watchtower as it was then called, as a legal tactic so he could use that as a defence in court. And it led to a split in the movement. There was the Standfast movement which left because they were Standfast against the purchase of the Liberty Bond, the Liberty Loan. Rutherford even prayed on a raised platform with Catholic priests and Protestant clergymen for victory in the First World War during a national day of prayer. Yeah, Robert, um, I think I know which way this conversation is going. Uh, I, I can see, obviously, you are critical of the organisation. I'm sure you're not going to be surprised to hear that I, I'm afraid I cannot listen to any more of what you're saying. Uh, I appreciate you may be genuine, you're trying to get to the bottom of this, but I would just say this. You have to have humility and trust in Jehovah's organisation. It is the only channel. You need to prove. No, no, truth. mate. No, mate. You need and to you, prove. And you, and you, and you just no Bible verse. No Bible verse. No Bible verse. No Bible verse says I, he's hung up. He's hung up before I could say no Bible verse says you have to have faith in Jehovah's organisation. Christ said, come to me, all you who are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Nowhere did Jesus say you had to go to Jehovah's organisation for salvation. That's found in the Watchtower magazine. The Watchtower for the 15th of November, 1981, page 21. I've even memorised it. And whilst now the witness yet includes the invitation to come to Jehovah's organisation for salvation. Blasphemy. Shame I didn't get on to um, the UN and OSCE and uh, other similar issues. But, um, well, that was Canvey Island.